All right, D-Led. Let's roll. Uh, yeah, Coach, uh, just uh, trying to prep for this game. We know uh, you know, they ran it a lot last time. Is that kind of where you all start with uh, a breaking down the Panthers? Well, I'm sure they'll they'll have a uh, you know a plan that they they believe in, uh, regardless of who's you know calling it for them. Um, like I said, I think Matt Rule even said it the other day, you know, it's, it, it's mid season. It's not like all of a sudden you're going to come up with some magical new new offense. They're they're a physical team. They they ran the ball efficiently last time. Gotten a lot of you know they won first second down. Got themselves in a lot of second and shorts and third and shorts. Uh, well, they run the exact same plays, you know. I, I doubt it, but they'll, they'll have a, probably a similar philosophy. That, that wouldn't surprise me. In that group, uh, Chuba and Amir, and then everybody's got a new quarterback in the mix. How does that group stack up? Well, they added a – well, I mean, you could you could argue uh, subjectively that nobody's been more effective running the football over a long period of time, which is rare in this league than Cam Newton. So if they get the lead on you, it could be a problem because he, he's, he's a big physical player, got a big arm, and obviously it's – Won the MVP in this league, correct? So he's a, he's had success, and um, if they get a lead on you, they can really grind it out, and they can make it make it a problem. Michael, uh, yeah, uh, when it comes to Cordero, is what he's accomplished this season about as good as maybe you could have imagined or hoped for when you when you started working with him? Um, you know, I think the thing about CP is really about it. You know, every one of our players can. Can we get? Can they help us win? And can they improve? You know, obviously individually as well as we're, as we're trying to build this thing, as as we're trying to grow week over week. So obviously CP's had a huge impact this year. Um, certainly when you when you sign somebody in free agency, you you hope to get uh, a, a decent amount of production, and he's exceeded that. But uh, again, we got five more games to go. Uh, we're right in this thing, regardless of what how it's felt at certain times. I mean, here we are in December. It's a big game for both teams, and so. Whatever we got to do, you know, we we got to improve as a team and take another step for, for this game on Sunday. So, and CP will be a part of that. Right. I guess just what I was getting at was, like you said, when you sign him, you have, you have a plan, and you've talked about that multiple times. Mm -hmm. I was just wondering, this is gone basically with him specifically as a coordinated plan, or maybe even more than than he would. Yeah, well, I, I don't, you know, don't have like a stat sheet that says if we know we need three rushing touchdowns, we need five reception, you know, receiving touchdowns. It's not. It's really impact until you get to work with a, with a player and how they fit, you know, and, and it's going to change uh, year to year and certainly week to week, depending on who's healthy, who's up, who's down, and where they go with that role. And certainly CP is uh, taken off and run with it uh, in, multiple, in multiple ways for us. So as long as we can keep evolving, uh, you know, we, we got to continue to get better. Because like I said, there's five games left and uh, there's none more important game than the one this week. You've talked about that a couple times now. You know, to see it being more—is that just kind of? I hate saying coach speak, but you know, every game being important, or is there more of a recognition of what this game could mean for? It's the just the circumstances. It's not coach speak. I because I, you know, I, I hope you guys don't think I come up here and speak in cliches. No, I try to answer everything you ask me, so I'm certainly not sitting there like I've got a, a handbook of coaching cliches. So basically, it's it's the situation that's in front of us. Reality is in front of us. Every game's important. We know that. I mean, you're in a 17-game season in the National Football League. Obviously, every game's important. That's, that's kind of a no-brainer. But the circumstances, if you, if you won enough, like I said, it doesn't – it's not like five and seven, you're sitting there beating your chest, be like, oh, look at us. Whoa, we're five and seven. No, but, you, but the situation we've fought, and it hasn't – you know, you've had your ups and downs as you go through a season, is that you're in games that matter this time of year, however you, however you want to slice it. And this is a game that matters. Not that the game wouldn't matter, but if you're sitting there with only two wins, you're, you pretty much know you're not going to the playoffs. So that that's really the, the point there. Josh, how many times have you watched that Monday night game, 49 runs and three passes? Well, you know, that was the, the circumstance for them. They uh, the, Where the win was, I mean, we're, we're certainly, who knows what kind of weather we'll get when we have to make our trip up to Buffalo. And uh, that's what good football teams do. Uh, I've been a part of games like that, uh, certainly – we played Denver in 2016. We ran the ball over 40-something times because we knew it was going to be ugly. They were coming off that Super Bowl win. And the way their, their uh, pass rush was, we, we felt when we, when we won the game, it was, it was very similar to that in Nashville in 2016 against Denver. Uh, we went up there, ironically, in New England in 2019 and damn near did the same, you know, th same thing. We threw it more than three times, though. But that, that's what smart, good football teams do. They know they have a plan. They execute it. And 
That's what I saw. From a play caller's perspective, is that enjoyable when, when you – Yeah, I may be a – you know, like I said, I'm not that old, but maybe I'm a dinosaur at heart. Um, that's, what I mean. that's what I said. I, I think any time you can execute a plan, whatever your plan is, and it works and your players, they, they, they play a certain way and they understand the plan and there, there's, a, there's an element to a team and you got selfless guys, that's beautiful to me. Uh, whether that's throwing the ball 50 times or that's running it 50 times. That's what we try to do every week. We don't have a set number. I think the guys that worry about the stats uh, are copycat just to, just to play it safe. Uh, whatever. That's not what we're trying to do. We're trying to build something here that can sustain and break through and evolve. And uh, anytime you certainly see a, a team that can play like that with, like, as a team and, and they execute a plan, that's certainly something that you aspire to be yourself. So. Uh, no different than us this Sunday. We, we, we have a plan, and we implemented the, the first part of it this morning. Now it's not to execute, but I, I don't get caught up in the stats. I think they naturally take care of themselves. If, you, if you're looking at the right process or you're making progress, as you build things, I think then that naturally that's been my experience is taking care of yourself. Can you improve week over week? Are you better at the end of the year? Are you better in year two? Are you better in year three? Um, I think that, that all plays a part of it. As a play caller, do you generally know – at kickoff, I feel like I'm going to run the ball 60% of the time today versus 40% or vice versa, or does that develop play-by-play play as you see what no, you've, you've got a plan in place, and then obviously, you know, you're, you're an injury away from having to adapt. Uh, you, that needs to be thought out, especially at a key spot. Um, you know, if you're going to change personnel as much as we do, I mean, you're going to have to have, like I said, I mean, an injury here, you can be taken out of something, so you have to have a, a backup plan or a plan after that. So. Yeah, you have a pretty good idea, and they they got they have a say too. So they can come out and they can play a completely different front scheme. Something you say, hey, it's an unscouted look, and that's our job as professionals in between series to adapt and and, and talk that through. So uh, that's the fun part of coaching. Within the the the, the, the uh, third down um, uh, analysis, how do you feel like you guys have have done it at, in in those third and long, third and seven plus types of situations? It seems like over the last couple of weeks that you, you, you guys have converted more in those types yeah. of things. Um, you know, that's those, and obviously you, you play over uh, 17 a whole season. Usually your numbers aren't going to be very high when you're in third and seven plus. Right. Um, we just look at it as an opportunity. We got the ball in our hands. Again, it goes back to the situation that you're currently in. <clears throat> Can you be in the present there? Obviously, you'd like to be in better than third and 12, sure. but you have an opportunity. And you, just, you know, and there's certain parts of the game you may have to play situational football. Backed up, depending on how you're protecting, you may be a little more uh, risk adverse. Uh, but when you're, when you're in that situation, you've got a quarterback that, that can extend plays, which Matt, Matt does in his own way. You've got guys that know how to get open and, and keep the play alive, certainly gives you a chance. So that's, there's a combination of things. There's something you may have seen. You try to scheme up, make sure you're, you're sound. Uh, but that's credit to our players and their mindset. Anthony? Um, when you look at the tape, DJ Moore, one of the young receivers, that can do some things. What have you seen from him when you look at him on the team? He's a good player. And offensively, well, yeah, offensively, you guys were able to get the running game going, and I think you rushed for over 100 strong yards or whatnot. Um, what did you like from your offensive line that you want to take the field in going into this game? Well, I think you can, you can look at it again. Do we need to find you? Yep. Okay, we'll get. Uh, Turn the fine into the PFWA. Um, <laughs> but, uh, no, Anthony, you, you want to see, you know, week over week, can, can we, you know, do we thought we took a step in Jacksonville. Obviously, more importantly, that, that resulted in a win for us as a team. Can we do it against, against a pretty good rush front? We did. Uh, there's always two ways to look at it. Yes, you like, you're pleased with the progress there. You're not pleased with the fact you didn't win the game. So, you, you know, you can see both sides of it. Uh, and, the, and the key is continuing. As we get down in here, we get late in the year, uh, do, are we better? Uh, you, know, you could argue, make a good subject argument. We have gotten better the last two weeks, but we're one on one in those two games. And can we do it you know, for a third week in a row and ultimately help us win? Chris, what, what are the advantages and disadvantages of seeing a, a team twice in the season? Well, uh, you know, with the, the divisional opponents, you're going to. Obviously, the, the more you play them and the, and the staffs and schemes kind of stay in place, you get pretty familiar with them uh, year over year, uh, and certainly as you see them a second time around. So I think that's the fun part about it. You, you are familiar with your per, their personnel. So and schematically, you've got a pretty good idea. 
how they attack you. They're going to make their changes, maybe tweaks here or there, but there's familiarity there. So when you're, it's not a, an uncommon opponent when you're going outside of your division or your conference, and you kind of have to learn. Hey, make sure your players know who these guys are schematically, what they what they're trying to do. So that, there is an advantage there because you do have a familiarity. And then you could say that the flip side is you got to make sure that you're trying to stay ahead and evolve, so you're not becoming too obvious because they they obviously have that same familiarity back. So that's kind of how I look at it. So with that, do you have a process of you know not overthinking your game plan, maybe trying to change? The I'm not going to get into our thoughts and our game plans. It's a good question, but I'm not going to talk about schemes or you know anything. And that's just this is my personal philosophy. Just like I, again, I don't think I work for the NSA, uh, but. I'm not going to sit here and pontificate and give the opponent something to, because they'll have guys that watch. I appreciate the question, though. I, do you enjoy the chess match? So. I do. I do. That's what makes the NFL fun. Because every week, uh, like I said, in the professional football, there's good players and new coaches across from me, regardless of what the record, where you're at. Um, there's a really good, smart players and coaches in this league. Have you ever gotten anything from watching another guy's press conference? I have, yeah. Sure, absolutely. Do I want to elaborate? No, 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 I don't. Do you still do it as a regular practice? I've got people that look at it. I mean, I think that's pretty common around the league. And, and, and they know what maybe to bring to your attention. They might say, they know sure. what to listen for. To sure. Say, hey, you might want to do this. Sure, absolutely. Hey, Coach, I um, just want to check on Marvin Hall and that you all are, uh, I know he's a speed guy and, and so forth, seeing him uh, here and around the league. See, uh, where is he at with you all? Like a lot of our guys in our program, you know, he's got a chance every week. If we feel like he can help us win, if he has a good week of preparation and we feel like he fits the game plan and he's improved and we're comfortable putting him out there, which which we have been once. Um, but like a lot of guys, you know, they're in they're in our program and everybody's got a chance to play on Sunday that's, that's on our roster. Where are y'all at with uh, Morello and Baby? He'll be dead a day. So... Probably take most of the guys one more day of rest. I don't see any of those being long term. We'll just have to take it day by day. Um, Hayden, what do you want to see from him as he makes his trek back from the spring? Uh, you know, he didn't miss that much time. But again, it's just when you haven't practiced in a couple of weeks, and I know Hayden's a professional, so he'll be in shape. You just kind of have to see what he looks like when he's out there today at practice. More cardio for guys like him? It just depends. I mean, you depend on how the, you know, the injuries have affected him, what he looks like, see how he responds. Uh, you know, really, certainly tomorrow and, and, and the rest of the week. Anything else? No line questions? <laughs> Come on. <laughs> Ideally, <laughs> Ideally, I'm sure everybody wants personnel continuity year to year. Do you think it's more important in a situation where you go from first to a second year coach or even specifically in the way you want to run offense? Well, I mean, certain spots, sure. But you want to constantly be looking to improve your roster. You want to constantly be looking to improve as a coach. I don't. I don't think Terry and I look at this thing like say, "Hey, look, just because we, you know, draft this guy that, you know, they're on scholarship now." Um, I think you're constantly looking to get better, and, and familiarity certainly helps. I think you'll see that, and you know where we're at with our cap situation, and and uh, you know the way our roster is currently constructed. There's there's going to be change. It's inevitable. I think the way the league's set up and, you know, every job's a little bit different, but certainly with our cap situation, it doesn't matter. You'd want, even if you wanted to bring everybody back, that's not reality. Uh, so at certain spots, I think the staff familiarity helps too. Uh, yes, yes in, uh, yes in certain spots, but otherwise you're dealing with the reality is we're going to have a lot of new faces next spring and next fall. When, when you're looking at the practice squad this time of year, how much of maybe – the future process of that, knowing you're down so many new spaces, goes into maybe X number of those spots versus guys who might start uh, out. Yeah, again, that's not – anybody we bring in here, we think it can help us, whether it's in the short term or long term, we wouldn't bring them in here. So, you know, you're allowed to with the, with the current rules. you got 16 players. You can see a lot of teams, you, you need those, especially with, with everything that's going on right now. And being able to, you know, to activate guys, standard elevation, COVID elevation, um, the IR rules, it all it all helps. I think it's I think it's really good for the game. Uh, but certainly, if you got if you have guys that you can develop, that's a win, right? If you sign a guy, he's on your press squad, you develop him. That's that's a pretty good, uh, 
use of your roster. But we're looking at the same thing. But everybody that's out there at practice, they got a chance to be up on Sunday. How do you manage and what do you say to your defense come off a game where they were able to have a pick six so that you can create more havoc and win the tournament? You try every week to do that. So there's no magical words. It's, it's a matter of executing, understanding the game plan, understanding what you're gonna what you're gonna face, um, understanding the call. You know that's a, that's a big part of it. Uh, certainly, you'd like to you'd love to get those turnovers, and you know if you, there is some kind of momentum, sure. But uh, again, when you know Marlon, he happened to sniff out the screen, made a hell of a hell of a catch, and made a big play for us. Uh, no different than AJ. You know, going up in the Thursday night game, making a play on the ball. I mean, that's, to me, that's improvement week over week. He knocked a lot of those down, and he got up and got them. I mean, that's just part of the improvement process. Chris, does it concern you uh, how much Matt's been getting hit? I think last week he was hit like 11 times and was sacked five times. Does that concern you? I mean, it, that's such to, to me that the language of like, there's always things you need to work on, concern. We we got to play better and, and and score more points and win games like that. That's part of the, the process. But to, to take one narrative, okay. So like if you play that narrative game again, there's always things to objectively improve on. So two weeks ago we didn't do a good job in third and one, right? Last week we were better there, but now you had some things against a really good front, and they, and you don't want to see the quarterback get hit. They did. They got him. A lot of them were were uh, right after the ball was thrown. Certainly they they had a couple sacks. Um, so, but you're looking, there's always something you've got to improve week over week. You look at the whole picture, um, you can argue that we've been decent in pass protection. There's been certain games and matchups, and we've gotten down, and you're getting, you, it gets too one sided. It makes, it makes it a challenge. But I don't know if concern is the right word. It's kind of a, kind of a I don't know, it's just kind of a defeated kind of language. It's more of a, hey, objectively, what do we need to work on? What do we need to improve? Because there's always something every every week. How would you describe Cam's journey? Obviously, he just started got back in the league. Now he's starting quarterback. And Probably be a better question for Cam. <laughs> uh, just he's a great player, been a good player in this league for a long time. Got a lot of respect for him. But in terms of his journey, it's probably a better question for Cam. Anything else? Appreciate you guys. Thank you. Thanks.